Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to cover uh, post-COVID travel. Um, a lot of people are going to start traveling via their vehicles instead of planes, trains, you know, instead of the mass transit. So I want to start covering uh, what you should be carrying your vehicle or what items um, would benefit you to have in your vehicle. I know if you do, you know, you should already be having some basic items in your vehicle. So a lot of this will be um, just on top of that. A lot of it will be re repeat items. But there are going to be some specific COVID type stuff. So a lot of people don't do um, much traveling via their vehicle. So they're always used to traveling by plane, uh, train, bus. And now more and more people are getting in their vehicles and they're driving cross country, driving, uh, traveling the state, going to other states that don't have as restrictive lockdowns. And unfortunately, more and more people are getting into trouble because they were ill prepared. Now they need to sleep in their car or their car breaks down. Um, they find themselves in scary situations. So I just wanted to make this video as more and more states and cities and counties and economies kind of start to reopen here in the US, what you should be having in your vehicle. So we're gonna start from right to left and it's just gonna be fairly straightforward. Uh, these are things to be able to help you uh, travel with a, you know, with with no worries, be able to uh, fix simple things if they break down, you know, so they don't become issues. And lastly, in case you do find yourself in that precarious situation, be able to not just uh, survive in your vehicle, but thrive or assist others who are ill prepared. So right off the back, we're going to have some down here, some medical kits. Um, you know, I always recommend having trauma kits. So this is the trauma kit I have in my vehicle. It's not a fancy, you know, just some triangle bandages, a cat tourniquet, some gloves, some quick clot. That's normally what I have in my vehicle because um, accidents do happen, right? Injuries happen, you're away, you're camping. Always have something of that sort. So what I'm, what I'm adding is more a prolonged uh, type care kit. So you're going to have more um, items there to be able to treat injuries that, you know, in, in case you don't want to go to the hospital because they're overrun with with patients, again, you're, you're driving um, cross country, so you're far away from any hospitals, clinics, you don't, don't know the area. Uh, the, this is gonna be able to let you take care of those injuries. And of course, you know, a lot of people always have the simple kits. So again, you can buy these at any uh, CVS, at any, you know, local pharmacy, 7-Eleven, uh, but they're never as good as the one you're gonna make. You know, different video, video I've made on that. I have a CPR mask, you know, um, personal protective equipment is always good. So having something, if you do stop uh, either with a family member or, again, you roll up on an incident and someone does need CPR, uh, make sure you're protected. Uh, what we're adding you to this kit is going to be some good PPE. So, again, again, you know, some hand sanitizer, making, your wa making sure you're washing your hands. But when you can't, hand sanitizer. I've thrown some gloves. I mean... I've thrown some mask and just your basic surgical mask. I know we have cloth masks. We have different types of mask, um, some gaiters, but these offer better protection. And sometimes you just want that better protection. So unfortunately, if you do it, go to the hospital, you go to credit areas, have your surgical mask. And if you have N95s and you're fit tested, uh, make sure you carry those too, because they do offer the best protection from everything out there. But having a good medical kit, definitely a plus when you hit the road uh, this spring or this summer or even this year you know uh, next we're gonna do some uh, lights I always have a headlamp headlight uh, different colors flashes storms this is a cheap one that you can find at any um, auto parts store but it works if you need to work on your vehicle um, just hang it as a little hang a little magnet it's a little bit more pricey sticks to your to your vehicle they can charge your your phone your tablet it does have lights, different. So that's always good. Some lights. You're going to have some um, chem lights, some glow sticks. Those always help, kind of like flares or just half around the vehicle in case you don't want to uh, use up your batteries. Next, we're thinking about um, using the restroom on the road. A lot of places close down the restrooms. They won't even let you use it, even if you're a customer. So unfortunately, sometimes you need to pull over to the side of the road use the restroom or if you're camping if you're staying in your car you're gonna have to use it in your car so uh, plan accordingly 
use a bottle. You can find uh, an actual urinal online, um, medical supplies, some toilet paper or something to kind of use that sort. And then some trash bags to get rid of the waste. But you might find yourself using the restroom in your vehicle just because a lot of places aren't allowing general restroom use. We're looking at staying warm. So again, traveling, who cares if you live by the beach and it's nice and cool or nice and warm. If you're traveling, you know, you might get stuck in a snowstorm. You might go up in elevation. It's going to get cold. Having a space blanket and some hand warmers, just extra in your vehicle, that always helps. Along with water, always having water even. In case of emergency, put in your radiator, uh, get you down to the uh, mechanic shop or get you out of that uncomfortable situation. But drinking water, have a gallon, have the smaller packs. That's always good. Going back to safety. If you need to work on your vehicle, you know, a safety vest is pretty good. Uh, that works around your vehicle or in case there's an emergency. Obviously, you're going to have your hazards on, have some flares or have some light. But safety vests don't hurt. Uh, going along with the change of clothes or to supplement if you need layers. So sometimes, um, you know, you're going out, you, you have dress shoes on and you need some boots. So go ahead, you have a uh, spare, comfortable, kind of be able to work and walk around. Uh, but long sleeve shirts, other shirts you can throw on. I have a sweater in here, just simple, cheap equipment uh, or gear that I can just quickly change to. So again, a sweater. I do have a a backpack and backpack, but that's for work. Normally, I carry all this stuff in there because due to my job, I might have to stay on location in case an incident happens, uh, stay on campus, stay at the you know at the company. Um, but all this can fit in a backpack like that or a different one. Right now, it's all just laid out. Again, since I do car camp in here, and if I had to sleep in my vehicle due to incidents, I do back there. It's a yoga mat, but I use it as a sleeping pad. You can get a yoga mat. You can get a regular traditional sleeping pads. For me, that's a little bit more comfortable. That's about 60 bucks on Amazon. I have a couple blankets to go along with that. But again, people are getting stuck in snowstorms and rainstorms. Highways get closed. Uh, it collapses because of uh, flash floods or debris. You want to be able to sleep in your vehicle comfortably. And then again, we, we can just sit in the passenger seat, we can driver's seat, um, fold the seats down. But this is going to let you, again, thrive in your vehicle. You're going to have water. You're not going to have to really stress about, you know, what am I going to drink? Where am I going to sleep? Where am I going to use the restroom? You're going to stay nice and warm in your vehicle. Uh, talking about extreme heat, got the shade tarp. Um, again, this here on the left, this is what's known as a window sock. Uh, different brands out there, they're not too bad. But if you ever, if it's too hot and you got mosquitoes, bugs, and you don't want them coming into your vehicle while you sleep at night, this will provide some privacy, but also uh, let that cool air come in without the bugs and the mosquitoes and all that coming in to your vehicle. For privacy, we do have, of course, the sunshade. Put that in front of your vehicle, uh, provide a little bit more privacy, reduce the sun. That always helps. We're continuing on the, here in the center, we have kind of a, a um, D-ring type hitch. And we got a toe strap. If people are getting stuck, um, a lot of times passerbys are willing to help. So they'll help pull you out if you have the right equipment. So make sure you know what you're doing because it can be dangerous. Um, but having your own gear kind of makes it more likely that someone will help you uh, or you can help others. So being able to get your vehicle pulled out from the snow, from the mud, uh, from the side of you know, the road, but having all the equipment be able to pull out. We're looking next, we're looking at some basic repairs. So having a uh, basic multi-tool, you can have, of course, uh, better tools, screwdrivers, knives, cutters. Uh, I go with the multi-tool because again, I try to maintain my vehicle fairly well. Um, so that any small incidentals that helps I have these small uh, Velcro straps. Uh, same thing, instead of using the zip ties, I use these, these work, they're multiple. You can never go wrong with duct tape, so I got some duct tape in there. I have a small fire extinguisher, so if it's a small campfire, if I'm cooking, if I just, something catches on fire, something small, I can kind of help out, but you know, I would be ignorant to think that if my car is fully in, in, engulfed in flames, uh, that, that would, that's gonna put it out. That's for the smaller incidents, uh, but it's always good to have. 
So throw something there, make sure it doesn't just bounce in the back, make sure it's secured, uh, make sure you're checking that it's not expired, that still works, still pressurized. Next, we're looking at some maps down here. So I live in California, Los Angeles County. So having a map of SoCal and having a map of the freeways in case I go somewhere that I'm not too familiar with, my phone dies, uh, I lose service, those maps can help me out. And again, they're printed. I can spill stuff on them. They'll laminate it. Uh, they work fairly well. Uh, it's always good to have some way of carrying fuel. I know this is not enough. It's not. It's a one liter um, fuel canister. This works for me. This vehicle has a good amount of range. You know, I, I try to prevent it from getting under half. But if I ever need fuel, or sometimes you know, you see passengers or other motorists, motorcyclists that need fuel, instead of having to buy one for thirty, forty dollars at the gas station, you already have yours. Just fill it up before you start that road trip. That always helps. Uh, let's see. Next, we got some tools. We got a small collapsible shovel, and it, you know, it can be a pickaxe as well. Um, again, if you get stuck and you have no one to help you, you know you might have to just dig yourself out. Or if you pull over aside and need to use the restroom, same thing. Small shovel, smaller repairs, cut some wood, you know, keep warm. But small tools to kind of help you out. And lastly, we have some gloves. It's cold and hot. You don't want to injure yourself. Make sure you have some basic gloves to kind of help you out and that's pretty much it again all this i'll show you at the end all this can be packed up nicely in your car uh, it's not too much weight it makes you feel safer when you travel just extra stuff to start carrying now that we're all thinking about uh, road trips about camping about getting back on the road about traveling now that kind of some states are reopening due to covid trending downwards and all this is separate from making sure that you're Vehicles in tip-top shape that you've changed the oil. You have uh, you check out all the fluids. You check your tires, rotate your tires. Um, you know you wash your car before a trip so you can uh, see better, so your brake lights shine brighter, um, so you don't have any of that uh, muck and dirt around your windshield or your mirrors. But again, do the basic maintenance and then throw in some stuff. And again, depending how far you're going, you might not have to carry all this. Um, but again, it's just for a peace of mind. So everyone, let me know what you would throw in your vehicle. Let me know if I missed anything. Um, I did forget to talk about the jumper cables there. Again, I've helped so many people. Their battery dies. They can give me a jump. Uh, I can give them a jump. They do have little self-contained packs where it's just a battery pack and you can kind of jump your vehicle. You know, maybe down the line I'll, I'll move towards that. But for now, I'm using the traditional jumper cables. But simple equipment, and I'll show you how it all looks. And here it is, everyone. Everything you saw earlier is packed up in the back. I'm able to use my middle row for actual seats. I always throw in a blanket on top. My windows are tinted in case anyone's looking into my vehicle. Everything's covered and concealed. You know, hopefully prevent a break-in. But everything's underneath. Everything we just covered underneath, and I'm able to carry all that. If I do need more stuff, I can just push um, everything to the left or to the right, rearrange more stuff, and carry my backpack, my travel gear, my actual travel clothing. And if not, I can use the middle section for my actual travel equipment. But again, get yourself the equipment, feel comfortable, kind of like live in your vehicle. Um, but you're going to be reassured that you're traveling safe and if something does happen, you'll be ready. Stay, stay safe, everyone, and like and subscribe.